You know, Dave 101 is about my thoughts because I got a lot of people always asking me, Dave, how can we never really hear your opinion on the show? And I used to write a blog weekly on this show, and it would really, really kind of push me and allow me to get my thoughts out. However, over the last number of weeks, I kind of laid off the blog because there wasn't a lot for me to do. Even though there was a ton of topics, everybody was already covering it. I'm like, darn it, like, what do we got to do? That's why we started up with John Hudson on the Unbiased UFO Report. And that's the reason why, you know, we wanted to start another feature here that people could also catch it on our YouTube channel as well as a separate feature. Because we were talking about bringing the vlog and turning it into, or a blog, turning it into a vlog. Confusing for some including said host. But my topic, as I introduce this Dave 101 to you guys tonight, is this. I'm starting to hate ufology. I really am. And let me explain why. Some of you may come out and say, boy, this guy sounds like he's whining. This guy sounds like he's complaining just because he didn't get his shot while others are. No, that isn't it at all. What I'm complaining about and why I'm starting to really like, dislike ufology is because everything is the same. And there isn't a lot of teamwork that goes into UFOs. The same groups hang out with the same groups and the outsiders are never invited to the party. We have three sections. I've I've literally made this, this understanding that there is three sections to ufology. Section number one is the old guard. The people who've been around 20, 30, 40, 50 years doing the same thing. They're all on the conference circuit. They all know each other. They all do the tours. They all share each information with each other. Then you got the middle crowd, which is where I think we fall into, which is, hey, everybody likes those people. Everybody, you know, pats those people on the back, but they're not one of the originals. They're not one of the people that we go to. Then you have the younger UFO crowd. The younger UFO crowd doesn't necessarily mean age, but people who have literally been in the, you know, in the spotlight the last few years and are just making a name for themselves in this community. Now, the younger crowd, for a lot of them, have been really ignored by the older crowd. And the younger crowd has done a great job. Sorry, it's over here. Uh, okay, has done a great job at promoting itself. They took full advantage of social media. I look at people in that younger crowd like Danny Silva from the Silver Record. He is somebody I highly admire. I may not fully agree with his opinion on UFOs and, and the narrative, but I do know that Danny is very connected. He's worked very hard. He's not there to upset people. He's there to provide the information that he has been given. So he gets a thumbs up, all right? I look at people like Grant Cameron in the old guard who literally are not concerned about the borderlines as much as it is about the investigation of UFOs and seeing where those topic takes us, whether it's government conspiracy, whether it's consciousness, whether it's people claiming that they have flown UFO ships. But in the end, We don't see a lot of the younger guard getting a lot of conference speaking. And what they are doing is they're starting their own podcasts. They're starting their own networks. They're starting their own blogs and and news outlets like The Debrief. And they're saying, screw you to the old guard. You guys have done nothing for us up until this point, save for a few. We're the ones getting the information. We're the ones who are working our tails off to bring proper news to this. We're not worried about the conferences. We're not worried about the popularity. We're here to get to the story. 
wherever that narrative lies. Ah, but the narrative. Not allowed to question the narrative. That's where us people in the middle kind of get screwed. We get screwed by the old guard because they don't want anybody encroaching on their territory for their conferences, their television shows, their everything. Their $250 uh, blogging sessions with live Zoom links. All right. They don't care. The conferences need the old guard because the old guard has the name effect to them. They are the people who have the following. They are the people who have the the people who are the followers, pardon me, who are going to run their people through the doors, through the gates of all of these conferences. People in the middle whom you may know, you may trust, you may enjoy, rarely get that opportunity to cross either border, if I'm making sense. We have a say. We're smart. We have opinions that matter. We have picked up on information that the old guard refuses to listen to and the new guard doesn't care to listen to. And it's like being stuck on an, a deserted island where you were trying our hardest to get the message out. And it's like that old Queensryche song. Is anybody listening? And then you realize that the people whom you're trying to build that relationship don't care about what you're doing. And therefore, when I look at the UFO story, for instance, I was the only one to this day pointing out the media mainstream screwing the UFO field by not asking the right questions, not knowing what those questions were. And to have people in ufology critique that, who've never worked in journalism, say that I was wrong, I don't know what I'm talking about, just made me shake my head. It's been going on since the To The Stars Academy came out. But the point that I'm getting at overall is this. Ufology is turning into a giant mess. We have people attacking each other. For what? The majority of us don't make money off of this. We have people making false accusations about each other. For example, accusing people of, you know, buying followers on social media outlets like YouTube, okay, without any proof. We have people out there who are trying to ruin others' careers or others' research. Why? Because they want to take that step up onto the next pedestal. They don't want the people who they feel are below them to get that opportunity or above them, they believe it's time to fall. Many a times I've seen on UFO Twitter where a lot of these young guns, okay, have said it's time for the old guard to step aside and let the new guard come on in and take over ufology. Don't need that either. It literally has become a giant soap opera of moody people, cranky people, arrogant people, and people not willing to recognize hard work, whether it's in radio, whether it's in YouTube, whether it is in research itself or writing books. There are a ton of people that deserve an opportunity to present their research, to present their information, to present their stories that do not get an opportunity to do so because they are shut down by one of the guards. Come on into the middle with the rest of us. You're more than welcome. The water is fine. And until ufology starts to say that this isn't good enough, the outsiders like you, the listener, need to be able to put their names on the line saying, you know what? 
I don't like this person because they're treating the rest of Uchafology like crap. Or I don't like this person because they're trying to pawn off CGI videos on me. Or I don't like this person because they refuse to look at the experiencer. We got to drop the I don't likes and make things happen. Ufology is going to happen in three stages in order to get to disclosure. We're already through stage one, which is, if you buy into the story of Luis Elizondo, that we have to be able to, to move forward with the topic that UFOs are real. We got that. All right? Phase two is saying that it's not Russia, it's not China, and it's something otherworldly. Wherever that world is, we don't know as of yet. Phase three is the next one. What are we going to do when all of a sudden we say aliens are here? Is ufology prepared for that? We know the mainstream public probably is not, but is ufology really ready for that? Because for years, they have denied the experiencer. They have denied the anecdotal stories of eyewitness testimony. They have denied people the opportunity to rise up and make something of themselves in some sort of name and capacity, much like Travis Walton had the ability to do so. We need more of that. We need more stories. We need more. What's the word I'm looking for? We need more help and trust in getting people out there. It's not about proof, people. Everybody wants proof. Where is your proof? You don't have proof. All you have is a story. Last time I checked, ET is not allowing you to bring your cell phones on board craft and take a bunch of photos like you're at Disneyland. It's not what happens. It's not how the game is played. So for all these reasons, I'm really starting to get sick of ufology. I love the topic. I love a lot of the people who are involved. I love the personal relationships I have gained through people like Samantha Mowat, Lorian Fenton, Nicole Sackage, Bob McGuire, and many, many others. What I don't like is the attitude of the entire field that is divisive, it's subjugated to a lot of politics. It's subjugated to you only get as far by who you know. And it's unfortunate because there's a lot of great programming and there's a lot of great information out there as we continue on to bring this story to you. So on this show, we're not going to cut out ufology. No, no, no. We're going to continue with UFOs. But what we are going to do is we are going to continue to bring stories to you of those personal encounters, those impersonal sightings. What the government does, we have no control. What we do, we have full control. And that is your first ever Dave 101 of the Week. <laughs>